soit une salle bonne. Good morning and welcome to Christchurch for our virtual Sunday worship. Today is the Sunday before Lent. Lent this year begins with Ash Wednesday, this Wednesday, and there will be a virtual service that evening at seven o'clock. So please do join us virtually for that. And then following on from that, every Wednesday throughout Lent at seven o'clock, there will be a series of videos looking at some of the tough questions of life. Um, things like why does God allow suffering or why do bad things happen to good people um, and so on. And these will be available both on Facebook and YouTube, so do look out for that. If you would like to make a donation to the work of Christchurch, the link for online giving is in the comments section of YouTube and it's in a separate post on Facebook. The lockdown does mean that we are struggling financially um, and whilst we can make some savings, there are lots of expenses that continue regardless of whether we're in the building or not. So we do very much appreciate your donations. However, if you find that you yourself are struggling during lockdown, whether it's practically, financially, emotionally or spiritually, please, please do get in touch. We can either offer help and support ourselves or we can signpost you to somewhere else where you could get support. And um, please don't struggle on your own. And um, please don't think that your problems are not big enough to talk about. And um, we do want to hear from you if you're finding lockdown hard. So we're just going to take a moment to still ourselves as we come before the Lord in worship this morning. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. God is spirit. Let us worship him in spirit and truth. The Lord is with us. Let us praise his name together. And so we pray. Be with us, spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving power. Speak in us wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing and peace. Amen. Lights of the world shine upon us, set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory.
consciousness So our faces display your likeness Ever changing from glory to glory Mirrored here may our lives tell your story Shine on me Shine on me Shine The word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. All is laid open and bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. And so we pray. Eternal Father, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought and said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. So may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We bow our heads for the collect, the special prayer for today. Holy God, you know the disorder of our sinful lives. Set straight our crooked hearts and bend our wills to love your goodness and your glory. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the second letter to Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Here ends the reading.
Our gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 9, beginning to read at verse 2. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we know, in the Bible, mountains are significant. There are various examples of people meeting with God at the top of a mountain. The obvious one being Moses who went up the mountain and God gave him the Ten Commandments. It's from this that we get the phrase mountaintop experience. Mountaintop experiences are moments that don't happen very often. They only come along a few times in our lives. But the memory of those experiences can maintain us through more difficult days. I find it interesting that while the disciples experienced the awesome transfiguration, they didn't necessarily understand it. Peter, bless him, blurts out the first thing that came to his mind, which, by the way, is why I like St. Peter so much, because I find I can identify with him. Peter asked, could he build three shelters? But what he was actually doing at that point was trying to maintain this moment to keep the mountaintop experience for longer, to contain that awesome transfiguration, to hold on to it forever and never let it go. And I get that. 
There are moments in my life when I wish I could just freeze life, stop the world from turning and keep it that way forever. But that isn't how life works, is it? We do have to come down from the mountaintop and live the rest of our lives at the bottom of the mountain. When Jesus and his disciples came down from the mountain, Jesus is immediately thrust into doing work. There's an argument that he needs to deal with and then he heals a young boy. It's a little bit like when we come back off our holidays all relaxed and refreshed and then we're thrust straight back into our work as if we'd never had a holiday in the first place. But you see, it's those mountaintop experiences that prepare us and feed us ready for the work on the ground. Just as we rest during holiday times, which in turn prepares us mentally and physically for work, the same is true of our spiritual health. We have these wonderful moments with God where we are being held by him and guided by him and we can clearly see his face and we can hear his voice. But these don't happen every day. But when we do have these mountaintop experiences with God, this in turn prepares us for the work of Christ back in our everyday lives. And we can't keep these moments to ourselves. You see, the mountaintop experiences, whilst we're experiencing them, they're not actually for our benefit. Yes, they help us to grow spiritually, but as soon as we get down from the mountain, we need to use those experiences and those close times to God to then do his work in the community, within our world. We then need to be his feet, his hands, his voice. The mountaintop experiences are like food for our souls. They feed our faith, our belief and our trust in God. But this then sustains us during the rest of our life when we come back down to earth with a bang and need to roll our sleeves up and get on with the work of serving God. Amen. So let us declare our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. The Lord says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them, and they with me. O oh dear Lord, we want to open the door to you and welcome you in our churches, into our homes and into our hearts. We can do nothing without you. As the deer searches for water, so we long for you. Comfort all those who mourn the loss of a loved one with the deep gentleness of your presence. Loving God, at this time of crisis, when so many are suffering, we pray for our nation and for our world. Give our leaders wisdom, our health service strength, and our people hope. Lead us through these parched and difficult days to the fresh springs of joy and comfort that we find in Jesus Christ our Lord. And we pray that the spread of the virus in all its forms will stop in this country and around the world. We pray today for the many Christians 
displaced by persecution or violence. Homeless and destitute, may they find the shelter they so desperately need and be set free, free to worship you. O Lord, we pray for the people of Myanmar at this time who are seeking after justice and democracy. Father God, we pray for all our local shops and businesses, especially for all those who are unemployed. Help those who are struggling to pay the bills that they will be given the financial support they need. We pray especially for our young in schools and their teachers and for those home learning and their parents. Give them all courage not to give up, but to do what they can for each other. We know that you will bring us through this, O oh Lord, if we are honest and true to you. And so in the words of Saint Teresa, let nothing disturb you, let nothing affright you. Everything passes, God never changes, patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing, God alone suffices. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God wants us to live in peace with one another, so the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be, be with you. you. Peace be with 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 you. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, fill you with radiance and scatter the darkness from your path. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, gladden your eyes and warm your heart. Amen. Christ, the day spring from on high, draw near to guide your feet into the way of peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is Lost.
your home.